Hi, my name is Tony Gard. I'm the Director of Innovation and Industrial Design here at Kinetic Vision. Uh, we're in our cafe in our new Innovation Center and seated next to me is Jeremy Jarrett, who's the President of Kinetic Vision. Jeremy, welcome. Yeah, thanks Tony, pleasure to be here. We're talking about AI and digital twins. Um, and Jeremy, I know this is a passion of yours, but I also know as President, you have a lot on your plate. So why are we talking to you today? Yeah, I wear a lot of different hats, but um, the area of digital twins is something that I've been involved in since I started here at Kinetic Vision many decades ago. Um, even as a student at the University of Cincinnati, I worked in uh, that area. AI is something that's really enabled digital twins, and like you said, I wear a lot of different hats, but um, you know, the things that excite me are that the impact that it will make here at Kinetic Vision in the work that our people do every day, and then also in the customers that we serve, um, the impact that it can have with them. Can you talk a little bit about the impact? Because there's probably a lot of folks out there that either are familiar or more likely are not familiar with AI and digital twins. Yeah, you can see me taking a deep breath here. Um, so there is a ton of excitement uh, in the area of uh, manufacturing of products around digital twins and the enablement of those digital twins using AI. AI is a data-driven development process. So you need a neural network to see lots and lots of data, and then it recognizes patterns. If you are giving it video data or image data, that means you're taking thousands or millions of pictures. You have to annotate those pictures. Human, humans annotate that uh, by putting bounding boxes around objects for object detection. They make mistakes. A very fast way to create lots of data for a digital twin is to use Hollywood level CGI, automatically annotate all of those pictures and train the neural network with those images or that video. So digital twins can be used to train artificial intelligence. Companies like Amazon who do an amazing amount of AI and working with digital twins right now in their process, can other companies out there get to something similar or even remotely close to what they're doing right now? The big challenge comes in that uh, many companies <laughs> and the best companies in the world have already invested in facilities that aren't fully automated. What do companies do about that investment that they've created already? That's something that has to be thought about. Now the good news is because you're dealing with tons of volume of product, some very simple straightforward things can be done there to make a big impact. Most of the companies out there aren't going to be building new, they're going to have existing. So can you dig into that maybe a little bit more? There's a lot of different conditions that aren't measured. So one day a plant may hit its production output and another day it might not. And there's literally very little visibility into why that happens. You know, many of these facilities have existing camera networks. They're just security cameras. And what they're there for is if something goes wrong and packages are spilling off the line, we want to go back and look and see, oh, why did that happen? How can we prevent it? But that requires a person to be looking at those cameras and watching or going back and reviewing data. Um, these camera networks can be really easily hooked up to vision AI and applying that AI to existing camera networks to understand where forklifts are, is there uh, safety issues, you know, are, is there a certain kind of package that's you know, wedged on the line in a wrong way, to, to understand that before it actually happens and automate slowing down the line or alerting a technician to come out and fix that. That's just, you know, that's just one example of you know, employing existing infrastructure um, with AI to start understanding on a day-by-day -day basis, how is that plant operating? How could we improve its operation? Just even small tweaks can uh, make big, big cost savings. If the old way of doing it is taking the video, right, or the imagery and someone is drawing bounding boxes on this thing, uh, and what might be considered the new way is the creation of digital twins. Tell me the difference in time from the old way to the new way and, and how quickly that can might be able to impact somebody's business. Yeah, so, you know, we'll just say one-tenth of the time. I mean, wow. it, that's just, I'm gonna say order of magnitude. It could be a little less than that. It could be a hundred times more than that. It depends on your application, you know, what you're doing. And sometimes you can't give up real data. Real data, 
you know, coming from the real world, you're never gonna get anything like it. It is still gold, but what you can do is you can augment that data set with your virtual data. When you're creating your digital twin, you need to compare it to the real world and make sure it matches if you're trying to create a digital twin of the real world. Although you're really limited by your imagination, uh, getting grounded with the physical world and making sure your digital twin matches for your most important you know, cases is a, is a really important step. And, it, and it's not trivial, it, it, it does take some expertise. And is that done here? Yes, in fact, uh, um, we have an entire dedicated physical space and physical lab where we have conveyor lines and motion capture studios where we can take and validate the digital twin to the real world. There are some companies out there that are saying they know the industry is moving super fast and they're behind. Right, so how do they even just take the first step or what is that in order for them to start integrating or even having this discussion around um, artificial intelligence and digital twins? There are you know, kind of two ends of the spectrum out there. One option is uh, just wait for it. <laughs> The industry's moving quickly, the solutions are emerging, uh, there are many vendors out there that are maturing and providing solutions that can just be procured. And that is a viable strategy, and many, many companies in the next few years are gonna be able to uh, capitalize on that strategy. Um, the other option is if you wanna be a leader, you have a big supply chain, and you want all of those companies in your supply chain to take advantage of this technology, you may wanna influence its emergence and its maturity. So. Uh, the key there is going to be working with partners. We partner with NVIDIA and Stratasys and then also some more mature startup technologies to work with our customers to start influencing those solutions in the future. So I'd say the biggest thing is if you want to move fast, you need to connect with a really good set of partners that can get you up and moving quickly while you're building your own internal infrastructure um, to capitalize on these technologies. How can people you know, reach out to you or get in touch if they've got questions about what we just discussed today? Yeah, Tony, so you can tell I, I love educating people on this topic. I am uh, super geeked out about how it applies and uh, I, you know, at, at any point in time, uh, I'm happy to you know, open the conversation about it. Awesome. So Jeremy, I'm going to do a little cheers here with you and say thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. I want to thank you for joining us and feel free anytime to come in and have coffee with Kinetic Vision.